Because the prophet says, religion, it is advice. Manners. We learn from those who are the real inheritors of the prophets. Inheritors of the prophets, as the prophet is saying, my alim, they are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. My alim, the knowledgeable ones from my nation, they are like the prophets of the Bani Israel. Everyone is going to jump saying, that's why I study to become an alim. That's why I get a diploma from this university and that university to become an alim. Because everyone is also understanding uh, those kinds of high, uh, let's say, the Hadith Sharif, its meanings are endless. Because the Hadith Sharif, its meanings are endless. You can never discover its full meaning. The Prophet may والسلام, open it and the meanings will still continue to open even after the Prophet والسلام, is veiled from this world. Those who are in his inheritors, they may open it. The meaning of the Hadith Sharif, it is not only to be understood just using these eyes and reading and understanding it like that. As the Allah, they are saying, the Ayatul Karima, there are 70,000 oceans of meaning in every ayat, in every huruf, in every letter of the Quran. Because the book, it is a living book. The Quran al Karim, it is the mother of all books. Understand what the mother of all books means? It means that all books come from the Quran al Karim. Our book, the book that we're going to receive, if it's not based on the Quran al Karim, if it's not based on that walking Quran, which is the Holy Prophet wasalam, So the meanings are endless. In every moment, it is without a beginning, it is without an end. What is necessary, you're going to take from it. Whatever is necessary, not what you're going to take, those ones that they are given that permission, they're going to speak. If it's not necessary, they're not going to speak. People are not ready, they're not going to speak. So, anyway, let's not speak too much about it. The alims of my nation, they are like the prophets of the Ben Israel. Those knowledgeable ones, does it mean those ones who study in universities or getting a diploma from this or that? It's meaning those ones we have who has uh, Knowledge, Ya Alim, is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ones who have knowledge. And the comparison is with the prophets of the Bani Israel. That is key. The prophets of the Bani Israel, they are most well known for their ability to perform miracles and to uh, turn the hearts of those ones that it is very hard. They are also known for opening their hands and wishing, asking from Allah and what is being granted. They ask, it is being granted. So the alims of my nation is not referring to the scholars, especially of the Ahir Zaman. But it's referring to those ones who are able to open miracles, that they open their hands and their du'as are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the inheritors of the Prophets. These are the Iwliya So, 
What is it that we are looking for in this Ahir Zaman? What is the uh, sohbet that we are looking for in this Ahir Zaman? What is the knowledge that we must run to get in this end of times? This by itself is a hidden knowledge. It's hidden not because it is so hard to find. It is hidden because the hearts of 21st century man has turned away completely from this kind of spiritual understanding, from this kind of knowledge, from this kind of common sense, because he's still very busy with his dunya and still very busy with the whisperings and the commands of the ego and shaitan that even when they are entering into spiritual ways, they're still looking for means to satisfy the ego and to satisfy their desires. And until this is understood and this is knocked out, they're not going to make too much progress. Because the intention is wrong. We may say we came with the wrong intention, but the intention now, it has to be changed. We must make the intention to become better. Most of us, we say that we are immigrants in this country or in other countries. Immigrants, Muslims. We don't belong here so much because we come from another place. It's okay. Because you just scratch the surface and you discover that everyone comes from somewhere else and going to somewhere else. And as believers, if you're not understanding that reality, that even if your grandparents and your great-grandparents and your ancestors from the time of Hazrat Adam salam was in the same place and you're still in the same place today for over 7,000 years, you are still an immigrant because our home is not in this world. We came from another world. Our great-grandfather, Adam salam, came from another world. We all came. We were in him from another world. And we're here just for a short while, and we're going to go back to our home. So when that hadith of the Prophet salam, the saying, the love of your homeland is part of your faith, it is not like so many uh, weird people scholars and politicians and, and uh, people using ideology saying, oh, that means that if you come from, let's say, Pakistan, then you must love Pakistan, it comes from your faith. If you come from Bangladesh, it has to be. You come from Turkey, it has to be. You come from any country. No, because there is no nationalism in Islam. This is where the meaning now. If it is not balanced with the outside meaning of it, with the reality of the inside, because the inside is real, the outside is just a form. Then if we just take the form without any meaning, it will fail. Because our home now, our original home, it is paradise. So everyone now, Holy Prophet is saying, the love of your homeland is part of your faith. How much faith you have? Oh, I have so much faith, I pray five times a day, mashallah. Today's people, Praying five times a day, they're saying they have so much faith. Uh, I go to Umrah every year, subhanAllah, mashallah, so much faith you have. I do this, I do that, I don't cheat, I don't lie. Everyone is very quick to give themselves credit now in these days. In the old days, they're saying, who am I? I'm nothing. Who am I? I'm the dirtiest one. Who am I? I'm the most uh, uh, low one. They don't dare to praise themselves in these days, everyone is the first to praise themselves. So you're praising yourself. You're a good one, you are saying. But where is your love? Is your love Ahirat? If your love is Ahirat, it is going to show in your dunya. You know how it is when you are going on vacation or you are traveling. You may even enjoy, you may even forget about your homeland. 
your country, your home for some time. But after that, what happens? You get homesick. You get homesick. And you're always longing, even if the most wonderful, amazing uh, sights are put in front of you. You say, I just want to go home. Maybe your home, it is a humble house. Humble faces around you. But there is something that is pulling you. You feel pulled and you don't feel comfortable where you are. And you're always a little bit longing and a little bit sad to go back. The believer must feel the same way too about our original home, which is paradise. Whatever this world is showing, you're still feeling a little bit sad to say, I don't belong here. I am an immigrant here. I don't belong here. I'm longing to go back. You're an immigrant. We are all here, alhamdulillah. We're talking about intentions. Everyone coming, we can say 100%. Coming because of dunya. Because of dunya. It is not because somebody is coming to America. I've never heard so far any Muslim especially, any Muslim person saying, why you came to America? I came to America to worship. You ever hear? If you ever hear, let me know. I came to America to worship, to practice Islam. Because in my home, I cannot practice. In my homeland, in my country, I cannot practice Islam properly. No, you don't hear that. Everyone coming here for dunya. We may have that intention. But we may turn around and Allah is forgiving and say, Astaghfirullah, Ya Rabbi. Although that was my intention, although that was the intention of my parents or my grandparents, now that I know better, I'm sent here in the Ahir Zaman, in the land where the sun is setting, to make the sun to rise from the west. To make the sun to rise from the west. We came from the east. We're going to the west where the sun sets. But the Prophet is saying in the Ahir Zaman, one of the signs of Judgment Day is the sun is going to rise from the west. The sun is referring to the sun of Islam. Now I'm waking up, not because of me, Ya Rabbi, not because I do so much research or I'm thinking so hard or I talk to people, but no, you are giving me that guidance. And more I should say thank, thanks to you that you're making me, moving me to be here, to be part of this light that is going to come in the Ahir Zaman to bring the light of Islam that is going to rise from the West. Whether the West in Europe or the West, the most West of the West, which is in America. So you may come with different intentions, but if you realize Allah's door of mercy is open, and you realize and you say, Astaghfirullah, and you turn, Allah is saying, you will find me most forgiving. So make our intention now correct. What are we here for? What are we here for, especially in the West, or in the West of the West, in this Ahir of the Ahir Zaman? Don't get lost in the small little lives that we are li living every day. We are not here to live our small little lives, our small little problems. We are believers. Our life, if it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is priority, it becomes the biggest life. Our life, if we're making the Holy Prophet والسلام, priority, it becomes the biggest life. At that time, you are doing everything to please Allah. At that time, you will be known, you will be let known to you. What is our role here? What is what we are supposed to do? What is Allah's plans for this Ahir Zaman? What are our plans now? If you're bringing Islam, if you're living Haq, if you're showing the beauty and the majesty of the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet wasalam, wherever there is light, the fire is put down. Wherever there is nur, there is no nar. Wherever there is light, the darkness is going to go away. Wherever there is Haq, the battle is going to disappear. 
But it is important that we live our lives with haq, with that light. And that light is coming from the Holy Prophet wasalam. We're taking that light now through the awliya Allah, his inheritors who are giving it to us. Now live according to that. Make the biggest of intentions to say, we are here, Ya Rabbi. I'm here. I'm worse than that ant with a broken leg that is holding one drop of water who wants to uh, put out the fire of Nemrut that he prepared to burn Ibrahim alayhi salam. I'm worse than that because you have given me more and I cannot even make that intention. My intention is to bring down the darkness, to bring down the kufr, to bring down the oppression, to bring down the zulm, to make that clear in my life, clear in my days, in my weeks, in my years, to tell myself and to live according to that. First, to bring down the darkness inside of me, to make sure that whatever that is inside and around me, it is following the light of the Holy Prophet wasalam. Don't start preaching to others. Don't start fighting with others. This is not your way. The candle is not fighting with the darkness. The sun doesn't fight with the darkness. It just appears. From its appearances, the light will go away. You understand? The light goes away. It retreats. When we have that intention very strong, the believer, he cannot be too comfortable in this world, looking around to see how dark everything is. He cannot be too comfortable even when comfort is given to him. And the believer now will run. What is he going to run for? Hmm? He is going to run to live the lives of the prophets. He is going to run in their footsteps. And he is going to take the examples of the prophets in their lives and the challenges that they had and he's going to see, yes, I recognize there is an Ibu Jahil. I recognize there is an Ibu Lahab. I recognize that there is a Firaun. I'm representing now. Which one you want to represent? You can represent Firaun too. You can represent Nemrut too. Don't. Don't support that. Stand up and say, as much as I can, I want to walk in the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam. I want to walk in the way of Musa alayhi salam. I want to walk in the way of Isa alayhi salam. And I want to walk in the way of the Holy Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. But understand that the every day that these prophets are going through, they are fighting. They are struggling. They are struggling against the battle that is around them. So look to your lives. What are your struggles? What are your struggles? What are your fears? What are your hopes? Sit. Don't let anyone to tell anything to you. Sit by yourself quietly and say, today, what was I worrying about mostly? Is it Ahirat or is it dunya? Is it myself or is it others? Is it my work or is it Allah? The answer will come straight away to you. You will know. You don't need any book or any guide to tell you that time. Just to be sincere with yourself. Now if you say, I'm living for the sake of Allah, and I'm helping, and this, you must have your proof. Then run, be happy, to know it is not you again. It is because Allah is sending that strength to you to be able to live that way in the Ahir Zaman. Don't take credit for yourself. If you're sitting down and you say, I'm doing but I'm not doing enough, that's even better. Because the believers tomorrow has to be better than today. The believers today must be better than yesterday and his tomorrow has to be better than today. So the believer is never satisfied with himself when he does something for the sake of Allah. So that one who is never satisfied, you think that one can give credit to himself? Even if the whole world cheers, he's going to say, it's not, it's not enough for my Lord. 
Yes, I'm happy he's making me to do this, but my happiness is making him to become even more happy. And the more that I'm doing, the closer I'm getting. And he's saying, oh, my servant, I created you for me. Come with me. Return. And if you are sitting down, you're understanding, whole day I'm just busy with my work. All my thoughts is just about that. All my thoughts is just about my family. All my thoughts are... Then, if you're calling yourself a murid and a believer, it has to change. Things are put, alhamdulillah, with the mercy of Allah, in the hours of the day to wake us up. At least five times a day, the believer must wake up. Is not enough. At least once a week in the sohbat, in the zikr, you must wake up. Murids, you have sohbat every day, but of course, murids don't need sohbat because they know everything. The Juma is supposed to wake up to listen to the khutbah. Holy days and nights that are entering should wake him up even more. Now you must feel especially with the holy months that are approaching, you must feel even more pulled towards what? Towards the Ahirat. To say, I need to take a break from this world. I need to take a break from doing everything that I'm doing. I need to pull myself more. I need to seclude myself more. I need to worship more. I need to be with my Lord more. I need to look at myself more. I need to be very careful what I do and careful what I think, and careful about my intentions more. Because that is when you feel that you are close to your Lord. You are careful because you are really understanding that your Lord is watching you. You are not putting a veil there and say, let me just be busy with my own small selfish life again. But uh, there is a big role for us to play in this Ahir Zaman. To end this dark darkness that is covering this world. Don't think that you're going to fight with people. Don't think that you are going to be uh, going into battle with people. It is not this completely, no. The struggle that we need to have first is against our own shaitan and our own ego. Then that time, wait for the events that are going to happen to the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed, Hazrat Mahdi alayhi salam. Now you must know what is Dajjal and what is Mahdi because so many are confused. So many in the Ahir Zaman, they're going to think that Mahdi is Dajjal and Dajjal is Mahdi. Some, they become so idiot, they say, ah, I'm caught in the middle, Mahdi on one side, Dajjal on one side. Where am I going to get my own free will back? You completely lost your intelligence. Huh? So you became a dualist again. He's saying, Hak and Batil, they are equal and they are in a balance. And you and what do you think we are? Disney religion, you are here, uh, good angel, bad devil on you, and each trying to pull you? What kind of a talk is this from a Muslim? Huh? That kind of Disney religion has overtaken you. So you are still not understanding that you are from Allah. If you are not from Allah, then you must belong to shaitan. Because it's exactly what shaitan is saying to Allah. I will pull them towards me. And Allah is saying, those you can, they are pulled. But those that I don't give permission, that they are with me, you are not going to pull. But shaitan is pulling from Allah. Don't think that you are 
Like today, people are saying, oh, I don't want to get caught between truth and falsehood, you know? I'm in the middle. So this stuff, we're not understanding yet. Wake up, don't get drunk. Understand where are the tricks and the traps of your ego? Where are the tricks and the traps of how your ego is making you to think, to say, to feel? Pull away from that. Walking in the footsteps of the prophets. Just ask yourself, Ibn Allah is speaking like this? Are they thinking like this? Are the prophets thinking like this? No. If they are not, definitely it's coming from shaitan. Stay away from that. It is very simple. Hmm. Our brothers just gave the derga a nice calligraphy. And it's a calligraphy with the words itself, which I've given sohbet for so many times. It's very important. It's saying, the head or the beginning of all knowledge, it is the fear of Allah. It is something precisely I've spoken some months ago. Everyone has lost the fear of Allah. Ali Sunnah people lost the fear of Allah. Sufi, oh, forget about it. They don't talk about the fear of Allah at all. At least in the past, we used to rely on the Wahhabis, you know the fear of Allah. They failed in that department too now. What, you think they have the fear of Allah, they're going to do what they are doing right now? It's another different kind of desecration that they're doing to the Hijaz. So there's no fear of Allah. No fear of Allah. No knowledge. It is showing no knowledge. You can swallow all the books, you can swallow the Quran, you can swallow all the six books of the Hadith, but no knowledge. No knowledge, no wisdom. No knowledge. Hmm. What happens now? Faith starts leaving too. May Allah increase our fear in Him. Yes, in our fear in the Holy Prophet Our fear of the Prophet it is grounded on the love and the respect that we have for him. That from our disrespect and our not giving him his proper rights, is going to make a veil between us and him. And that veil is going to backfire on us. It's going to punish us because we're pulling away from his rahmat that Allah has said, we have created you and sent you to be the Rahmat al Alameen. And we're asking, Alhamdulillah, that we have fear from our share. And for us to increase that. May Allah forgive me and bless you. May Allah keep us in safety, inshallah. May Allah not make us to become those ones who are without fear, those ones who are without shame, and those ones who are without knowledge. May Allah make us to become strong, make us to live strong and to die strong. For the sake of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Amin.